I am Aslesha Goswami, PhD scholar of Department of Sanskrit, Gohati University, Assam. Uh, my paper is the title of my paper is Revisiting the Dashragya Battle A Comparative Analysis with Contemporary Indian Foreign Policy. Introduction The Dashragya or the Battle of Ten Kings is a pivotal event chronicled in the Rig Veda, one of the oldest known texts of human civilization. This battle fought between a confederation of 10 tribal kings and the Bharata tribe led by King Sudasa is not merely a tale of ancient warfare. It offers profound insights into the political dynamics, strategic thinking, and diplomatic practices of the Vedic period. In modern times, India's foreign policy has been characterized by a blend of pragmatism and idealism rooted in the principles of non-alignment, strategic autonomy, and re regional leadership. The country's approach to international relations is influenced by many factors, including historical experiences, cultural narratives, and the geopolitical realities of a multipolar world. This paper seeks to explore the parallels between the Dashragya bat battle strategies and modern India's foreign policy decisions. By analyzing the Rigvedic descriptions of the battle and comparing them with India's current diplomatic and strategic initiatives, this paper aims to uncover how historical precedents can inform and guide modern policymaking. Now come to the discussion part. part. The Dashraika battle or the Battle of Ten Kings stands as a pivotal event in early Vedic history, marking a significant shift in the power dynamics of ancient India. This conflict, believed to have occurred around 1400 to 100 BCE, pitted the Bharata tribe under King Sudasa against the confederation of ten tribes along the banks of the river Parushni, modern day which river is known as Ravi in the Punjab region. The Rig Veda, particularly the hymns of seven mantala, which are 18th, 33rd, and 83rd, is the main source for information on the battle, offering a blend of historical insights and religious invocations. King Sudas's victory over the confederation led by the Puru king was not merely a military triumph, but a testament to strategic acumen and divine favor as portrayed in Vedic hymns. <clears throat> strategic elements of the Dashraga battle. Sudasa, along with a small army of his followers, known as the Bharatas, was attacked by the combined and vast armies of Tankis. They were cornered on the bank of the river Parushni. King Sudasa planned to escape to the other bank of the river and, with the help of Indra, who made the waters of the Parushni shallow and easily fordable at the request of Vashishta, they were able to do so. River crossing strategy. The successful crossing of the Parushni River by King Sudasa was a particularly noteworthy tactical maneuver during the battle. Described in the Rig Veda, this maneuver exemplifies the Bharata's proficiency in overcoming geographical obstacles. obstacles. Diplomatic maneuvers and alliance management. <clears throat> the prominent role of the sage Vashishta in the Sudasa's victory highlights the intertwining of spiritual and political power, the ability to claim divine favor through respected religious figures was crucial to leadership and alliance building in Vedic times. Breaking any big coalition. One of Sudasa's key achievements was <clears throat> facing and defeating a coalition of ten kings. Also, divine intervention like Lord Indra helped Sudasa in this war, war and Vashishta is the thread between King Sudasa and Lord Indra. <clears throat> Comparative analysis with contemporary Indian foreign policy. Uh, overview regarding contemporary Indian foreign policy. Firstly, the foundation of modern 
Indian foreign policy are deeply entrenched in the principles of non-alignment strategic autonomy and regional leadership shaped by the country's historical <clears throat> experiences and its distinctive position in global geopolitics. Since gaining independence in 1947, India has pursued a foreign policy to uphold sovereignty while nurturing peaceful relations in other nations. As global dynamics have evolved, India's foreign policy has shifted towards a more pragmatic approach, emphasizing strategic partnerships, economic diplomacy, and regional stability. India's strategic autonomy is evident in its delicate balance between more major powers such as the United States, Russia, China, <clears throat> while maintaining strong ties with neighboring countries in South Asia. The country's foreign policy also demonstrates a commitment to multilateralism as reflected in its active participation in international organizations such as the United Nations, Greeks, and G20. <clears throat> India's emphasis on regional leadership is evident through its involvement in the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, SARC, and initiatives like the neighboring, Neighborhood First Policy, which aims to strengthen ties with neighboring countries. Parallels between the Shraga strategies and modern policy. Diplomacy and alliance building. In the Dashraika battle, alliance, alliances played a crucial role in the strategic landscape of the conflict. The coalition of 10 tribes against Sudasa demonstrated the significance of forming alliance to the counter a common adver adversary. However, the failure of the coalition to coordinate effective, effectively highlights the complexities of alliance management particularly when the interests of allied parties diverge. <clears throat> Deliberately, in modern Indian foreign policy, diplomacy and alliance building are central strategies. India has actively sought to build and maintain alliances that serve its national interests, particularly in a complex and multipolar world. For instance, India's strategic partnership with countries like the United States, Japan, Australia reflects its efforts to counterbalance the influence of China in the Indo-Pacific region. The Quad, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue is an example of a strategic alliance where India collaborates with other democratic nations to ensure regional security and stability. Just as in the Dasharagya, the effectiveness of these modern alliances depends on the ability to align diverse national interests towards common goals. Use of power and conflict resolution. The Dashraika battle highlights the significance of military strategy and the prudent use of power to achieve political goals. So thus is triumph, despite being outnumbered, was mainly attributed to his strategic utilization of terrain and military tactics. This principle of leveraging strength in strategic ways is reflected in India's current approach to conflict resolution and military strategy. The principles of modern foreign policy are deeply rooted in non-alignment, <clears throat> strategic autonomy, and regional leadership shaped by the country's historical experiences and its distinct position in global geopolitics. As global geopolitics have evolved, India's foreign policy has shifted towards a more pragmatic approach, focusing on strategic partnership, economic diplomacy, and regional stability. India's strategic autonomy is evident in its delicate balance between major powers such as the United States, Russia, China, etc., while maintaining strong ties with neighboring countries in South Asia. <clears throat> the Dashraika battle, <clears throat> battle is a 
classic example of real politic where the pursuit of power and survival dictated the actions of the involved tribes sudhas's so decision to encourage in battle was driven by the need to secure his tribes dominance and resources a motive that resonates with the real realist approach in contemporary foreign policy india's engagement in international organization and its economic diplomacy reflected the pragmatic approach to achieve its strategic interests for example india's participation in the trade agreement like the regional comprehensive economic partnership negotiations and its push for the permanent membership in the un security council are driven by the desire to enhance its global influence and secure its national interests influence of historical narratives on policy historical narrative including those of the dashraika play as play a significant role in shaping national identity and influencing foreign policy decisions in india the legacy of ancient conflicts the epics and the cultural memory of past victories and losses contribute to the formulation of a foreign policy that seeks to project strength and moral leadership the idea of dharma moral duty and the strategic wisdom from ancient texts like the mahabharata and arthashastra continue to influence the strategic thinking of indian policy makers this influence is evident in india's emphasis on non aggression peaceful coexistence and strategic autonomy however when national interests are at stake in this foreign policy also reflects the real politics seen in ancient conflicts like the dashrath the balancing act between these historical narratives and the demands of modern geopolitics defines the unique character of india's foreign policy today now comes to the conclusion the compre the comparative analysis of the shrike battle with contemporary indian foreign policy under scores how historical narratives continue <clears throat> to shape a nation's strategic culture india's foreign policy characterized by a blend of idealism and pragmatism mirrors the ancient strategies of balancing power managing alliances and prioritizing national interest over ideological commitment <clears throat> this historical consequences consci consciousness sorry not only shapes india's identity on the global stage but also guides its responses to the evolving challenges of a multipolar world in conclusion the study of the shrike battle concerning modern foreign policy highlights the continuity of strategic thought across millennia as india navigates the complexities of the 21st century the insights drawn from its ancient past remain relevant offering valuable guidance for future diplomatic and strategic endeavors understanding and in integrating these historical lessons can strengthen india's position in the global arena ensuring that its foreign policy is both rooted in the tradition and adaptable to contemporary realities thank you so much hari krishna